This is a new player guide about angels in War and Order, and angels are one of the strongest units that you will get access to in the game. So how do you recruit them? When can you start recruiting them? How do you use them and not lose them? Stick around in this video for everything I wish I knew at the start of the game when it comes to angels. Hello, my friends, and welcome back. I'm Chiskel Gaming, and this video is sponsored by the makers of War and Order. And I want to share with you the things I wish I understood about angels. Because when you're new to the game, especially if you're powering up quickly, there's a lot of things coming at you really fast. And one of them is that at some point, you will be able to spend a ridiculous amount of resources, at least it feels that way at the time, to build your guardian temple. Now, mine happens to be located over here, but it could be located somewhere else in your city, depending on where you put things. The guardian temple is the place where you can recruit this absolutely insane unit. And if we tap the info button here, there are a number of things that are very important here because this unit, the angels are so strong that the game doesn't want you to be able to have too many of them or to recruit them too fast. Yes, they are that good that the game slows you down. Angels are recruited by using Guardian Force or Angel Dust as the way that people talk about it. The Guardian Force is obtainable when your troops die, as long as those troops are tier four or higher. The higher tier troop you have die, the more Angel Dust you will get when that happens, but there's a limit to the amount of Angel Dust or Guardian Force that you can get in any one day. In fact, the number of angels you have is going to be constrained by a number of things, but there's ultimately a cap that says you can't have any more than the following amount of angels. Now, for me, that quantity of angels is right over here. It's the base of 35K, plus an additional 4K from a few other things, and we'll talk about where those come from. Now, just like other troop types, there are higher and higher tiers of angel that you get access to as you're able to level up your guardian temple. And of course, leveling up your guardian temple is going to be constrained based off of the level of your castle. So the higher level your castle gets, the higher level that your guardian temple can get as well. And you can see that extra resource right over here that is the guardian force. I have only 20K of it at the moment. Um, it is one of the critical ingredients for training up some of these angels. Now you also, by the way, can upgrade your lower tier angels to higher tier angels. And the great news is that it costs the same amount of dust to make a higher tier of angel outright as it does to upgrade your uh, lower tiers and make your lower tiers in the first place and then upgrade them. So all that to say, whether or not you upgrade and create lower tiers or you just start by creating the higher tiers, the dust total is the same. To make this example a little more clear, um, I can make 100 of these angels outright uh, at tier eight, or I could make 100 of them at tier five, then upgrade them from five to six, six to seven, seven to eight, and the grand total dust cost is the same. So ultimately you wanna have the highest tier angel that you possibly can, because again, your limit to the number of angels is actually very substantial. There's only so many you can have. So you want the angels you have to be really high tier. Now you may be wondering, Chisco, why exactly are angels so good? And angels do a number of things. First of all, they're kind of a frontline unit, but kind of not. They sit behind your infantry and cavalry in battle, and they do a sort of ranged attack. So they will be attacked before things like your mages and archers, but after things like your infantry and cavalry. And if we get a look at their stats, look at this T8 stats here on this angel. 1,910 hit points, 180 attack, 65 defense. This is kind of insane because if we compare to say my T8, uh, let's go with mages over here, okay? Uh, T8 mages, well, wait a minute. It's got way more health than a mage and more attack than a mage and more defense than a mage. See what's going on here? If you look at infantry, it's got more hit points than infantry, more attack than infantry. Now I'm an inf mage player, so that's why I'm looking at those particular units as the comparison point here. But all that to say that like pound for pound and really troop for troop, angels are insane. And that's why, again, you're limited to the number you can have. In fact, um, when you're making a march, the constraining factor here is 
how many troops you can bring whenever you leave your city. And this is very important for a ton of game modes where often you don't even lose any troops. For example, if we just go get a look here at the Star Ruins, something that you'll get access to as you're progressing in the game, you can defend with your angels and you don't have to worry they're not going to die. So who's going to be winning the most in the Star Ruins? It's the players that are at their angel cap. Obviously, there are other things that are going to matter here, but being at the angel cap is going to give you a huge advantage in all these events where your angels don't die. And I think that, from what I've gathered so far from playing the game, seems like the best way to deploy your angels in all the situations where they cannot die. If you are defending a city, if you are doing an SOS attack, uh, which is something that comes when you hit Lord level 35 and beyond, and you actually go and pick those talent points, doing things like the Star Ruins, uh, doing PvE events, heck, even doing something like the Anubis Tower over here, where, I mean, ultimately I capped out, and I guess I did okay, I'm rank 13, that seems pretty good, but in this event, if you have lots of angels, I mean, you're gonna do better than the people who don't have the angels, because it's just a stronger unit. So you want to get them, you want to hold on to them, and you don't want to send them to situations where they actually will die until you're ultimately capped out on angels. Now, there's a, I think, really good mid to end game advice that you should do whatever it takes to make sure you get your angel dust every single day, ideally by sacrificing your lowest tier of troop that you have. And there's a number of reasons why I think that makes sense in the mid game and beyond, but not in the early game. Because in the early game, Bro, you don't know what you're doing and you don't have enough troops to just throw them around and sacrifice them for me i think it would take like twenty thousand t4s to hit my dust limit for the day i mean i can't train my troops fast enough it feels like at the start of the game to actually hit my dust limit every day now maybe i'm doing something wrong maybe i'm looking at this incorrectly and maybe i just haven't done the math properly but i'm mentioning this because up to your first crown war I think that obviously having angels is going to help you and the more you have the better but i also feel like i don't know that i would make it an urgent priority i think the big advantage of maybe sacrificing some troops in the early game is to accomplish something very important which is to protect your city now what do i mean by that if you have troops above and beyond your hospital capacity then in a situation where you're not online or especially overnight your city could get zeroed, and that ultimately means that a bunch of your troops would die. So, for example, if I happen to get attacked right now, where I haven't sort of hidden all my troops, then uh, there is an upwards here of uh, 80,000 troops that could die for me, which is not a good situation if my hospital were to overflow. Now, some of them will go to my sanctuary. I'll show you that in a second. But I'm mentioning this because this seems like a great way to get rid of lower tiers of troops that are in your city. If you have some sort of garbagey ones, um, like no offense if you're newer to the game, but like T4s or something that like, hey, I got T9s now that I have access to. T4s are looking pretty weak. So finding ways to get rid of those, even if you have to just send a small number of them at an enemy city and just let them die, seems good to get your total troop count down so that your hospital capacity is fine. Now there's plenty of ways to hide troops as another way of protecting your troops. For example, I have a march right now in my Alliance Fortress. That's something that cannot actually be attacked. And so that's another way to hide troops. But once you've got a march of troops in your fortress and maybe you're starting to hide troops in other people's cities that are bubbled, like it starts to get cumbersome. So that is the sort of threshold after which I would say to you, hey, you should consider sacrificing some of these troops either by attacking cities where you think you're going to get a bunch of loot or by just you know carefully just sending them out to die and, and keeping track of exactly how many you need to die to hit your dust limit every single day and if you wanted to see what that dust limit is you just make your way over to the guardian temple you tap the info button and you can see right over here guardian force collected for today i have done none today i should do some if you were wondering just cool. how do I get more of this Guardian Force? There are things you can do, although I have been spending and I still have not found it to be my priority just yet at uh, C26, that's castle level 26, in this sort of stage of my development. Maybe I'm thinking about it wrong, but 
Um, the things that you can do include, for example, if you use the Phoenix, you can level up this skill. This skill gives you additional Guardian Force collection and also improves the ratio of troops killed to Guardian Force or Angel Dust, which is really good. Also, if you go to your Lord Info, then to your Emblems, this improves your Angel Limit as well as your Guardian Conversion, which is really good at the rate at which things convert over to Angel Dust. Excellent. Um, and there are also other things that can improve the effectiveness of your angels. As an example, there are artifacts that can support your angels as well, but I mean, this just feels really premature if you're in the early game to be investing in a lot of things that enhance the effectiveness of your angels. Um, so for example, there are legendary artifacts over here, the holy robe, right? Like angel hit points, like I, I get it. Improving angels and mages seems cool if you are using um, Inf Mage and I guess angels. This might be a cool item, but it's not something I'm investing in at the start of the game because it just feels like way too early to be investing in those sorts of things. Uh, the Heavenly Spear, does that do it? No. No, I, I thought there was maybe another weapon in here. The Angel Sword? Ah, yes, this is it. It gives you an angel limit on six stars. I mean, forget it. Okay. I mean, most of us are not getting there for a very long time if we're still playing the game at that point, right? Like realistically. So there are ways that you can improve angels, but I, I wouldn't worry too much about improving angels at the start of the game. Just get to the point where you have them and you start using them in events where you can't lose them and store them safely in an Alliance Fortress. I will show you what that means. If we go over here, this is my Alliance Fortress you can reinforce your Alliance Fortress and the troops cannot be attacked. So anytime you're not actually using your angels for situations where you cannot lose them, just tuck them away safely, okay? Tuck them away safely. I think that covers all the things that I would wish I had known about angels at the start of the game. And I really was giving myself kind of a hard time for not pushing the amount of angel dust I was getting at the start of the game. Because uh, I, I just didn't understand. I didn't know what I should be doing. I, I really was feeling like I was missing on something there. And I'm not sure that I necessarily was. After our first crown war, we'll see how many troops that I have left, okay? Probably not that many. <laughs> and we'll see how I feel at that point about whether or not it would have been a really good idea to have gotten a ton of angels up to that moment in time. If I make my way over to the center of the map here, I mean, you can see the Royal City is going to be open for contention in three days and 19 hours. Yeah, I have a solid amount of troops now, but I don't know how many we're going to lose fighting for this thing, but I have a feeling I will be pretty glad to still have not sacrificed a ridiculous amount of troops leading up to this first crown war. And then after the first crown war, I don't know, maybe at that point I'll feel more comfortable getting rid of some amount of troops based on how many I have left over here in order to actually be able to recruit my angels. And I will say that getting your angel dust is really important because once we get to the point where we're doing realm invasions, this is uh, sort of the kingdom versus kingdom, realm versus realm, then uh, you can't actually have any troops die in this situation. Like once you get to that point, troops stop dying. So while Realm Invasion is happening, you can't make any angels. So there will definitely be a rush. And again, maybe I will regret having not gotten a ton of angel dust up to this point, but I think it'll probably be okay. If you enjoyed the video, throw a like on here and consider subscribing. And if you have any other tips about angels, definitely let me know down below in the comments. Uh, I'm only a month and a half into this game, so I'm still learning. I'm open to your thoughts. Subscribe if you want to see more new player guides just like this one. And until next time, you have fun smashing your realm.